What part of the project is Farron's responsible for, Martin? We're uh, responsible for the pumping station at Whitehall, plus the trans transmission main from Whitehall to Mary Vague for the sewage works. And how far are you through the project? We are at approximately, the whole job is about 4,800 metres. We are at change 3,100 here, so we're over halfway. So what's actually happening here? What can we see? How, how big a hole do you dig at a time? Our trench is 2.4 metres wide by approximately 2.5 metres deep. Now generally there's a trench box in there, but because we're stopping here to jump to the further part down at Mary Vague, we're going to put a truss block in here plus prop it off to test this actual section of the pipe here to make sure it's, there's no false leaks right. or whatever on it. You know. How do you actually test that? What we do is we fill it with water, we get a pump and prop it up at a certain pressure, say in this case here is 13 bar, which is 130 metres of water, mm -hmm. and you let it sit for 24 hours. If the, bar, if the pressure doesn't drop, it passes. If it does, you're in trouble. <laughs> Seriously though, if it does, I mean there could be a leak anywhere along there, could there? It could be, but generally every evening before we leave, we do an air test up to a couple of bar on it, which is a fair indication that there's no leakages. So we are very confident mm. that the, the whole way down there is going to be no leakage. But the telemetry that will be in when it's all up and running presumably isn't in at the moment. You can't use that to test anything. No, we can't, no. It's just purely bog standard run-of-the-mill testing right. methods for transmission mains. Just tell us something about the actual pipe, its diameter and what it's made of. It's a 900 diameter pipe, it's made of ductile iron and cement lined, plus it's epoxy coated and outside for protection for against rust erosion, whatever like that there. Very, very, very good pipe, very durable. There's a long lifespan of it. I'm not exactly sure how long the lifespan is, but it's, a, it's usually the standard pipe for this type of work. Would you be expecting your successes in 100 years time to be saying, God, they did a good job, look how long it's lasted? Yeah, I actually would, yeah. We actually pride ourselves as a company on giving a producing a quality job. And to date, we've had no problems or no complaints. So The important thing, of course, is, is the join between one section and the next of the pipe. How do you make sure that it's waterproof under pressure, <coughs> of course? Well, every pipe has a socket and a spigot end. You're now looking at the spigot end down there. The other end's like a bell mouth. Mm. And inside there's a groove where you put a rubber gasket in a seal. Now you push it home, there's allowed so much tolerance, about 10 mil in the seal. And then as soon as we push it home, we actually send somebody up the pipe for that length. It's only seven metres long, right. and they check it right. to make sure it's a visual inspection. Right. And usually a visual inspection, can, you'll see whether the seal's been nipped or it's out or whatever. And generally we do it in every pipeline, so we're very confident yeah. that everything I mean, is as If the seal has got nipped, do you have to you take the pipe, the pipe out, out, out again and put a new yeah. seal in? Mm. That's mm. one of those things, unfortunately. And there's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven other little pipes there. What are they for? They are all for for electric, fiber optics, for telecommunications, auxiliary ducts for uh, wee power stations and all of it. And there's the communication ducts, the purple ones that you see on that side there. That's right. for the Alamon government for their own community to keep the, the running off the whole. Right. The so if someone there. wants to put down a fiber optic cable at a future date, they can just thread it along there. If they pay the DOT for it, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting closer to the heart of this great oper operation. We're on the road towards Mary Veg, and I'm with Roy Cool, the chief executive of the Department of Transport. I say we're on the road, Roy. In fact, this is something that you thought of. This is a brand new road. That's correct. The, uh, the main concern that the local commissioners had, and also certain of the local residents, was the only access out to the site was the along Balnahau Lane, which was extremely narrow. And the, uh, I determined, having come in, out and had a look around the site, that we should construct a brand new road which would be dedicated for the, uh, the treatment works. And then that would minimise any inconvenience whatsoever to the local residents. In fact, you've gone round, this road goes round the back of those houses, uh, one of which is new, I know anyway, so they must have been greatly relieved that they weren't going to have this clattering in front of them. Certainly, because as well, certain of those people have uh, small children, mm -hmm. and as well as once the, uh, the works are in operation, the, the, uh, the biggest concern for them would have been the construction traffic. Mm. The, uh, and now everything has to come along the, the new road. Yeah. And um, 
What was the problem with land ownership? Did you, or do you indeed own all of this? Does the government own all this land? We, uh, we own 200 acres. We purchased it uh, several years ago. Although we only need 20 acres for the treatment plant itself, we determined that what we would require to have is a buffer zone around it so that, uh, again, that minimises any uh, inconvenience to anybody. And by a stroke of luck, we've just seen a train come through this bridge and I think you're saying that this is the first railway bridge built on the island for a century or more. Yes, the, uh, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first bridge that has been constructed over the railway since the railway was constructed back in the 1860s. Mm. We're very proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. <laughs> now, th there has of course been some public access down to the coastal footpath through Mary Veg. What will the position be on rights of way for that? That will still be maintained. We undertook a, a small diversion uh, off the uh, public footpath mm. because originally it went through the, uh, the site of where the new sewage treatment works will be. So we've just diverted it so that that is maintained for, uh, for all users. OK, I'm with Marty Downey now, Managing Director of Island Drainage. Marty, this is a pretty amazing um, civil engineering construction here. First of all, the bridge. You don't get to build many bridges, do you? No, this is uh, the first bridge, I believe, that's been built since, 19, uh, since uh, 1861. Mm. Um, there's about, we started it just after Christmas, the bridge. There's about just close on 400 cubic metres of concrete in it, about 200 square metres of stonework, so it's a fairly big structure. Well, I must congratulate you on it. It looks like one of the real old Manx bridges. The stonework's beautiful. Um, presumably very proud of it. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, as you can see, it's just not quite finished yet. There's still some copings to go on. Mm. But uh, when it's finished, it should, should blend in nicely with the countryside. So what else is happening here now? You've got the construction of the road down from uh, the back Castletown Road there. And... Um, how are you going to finish that off? Well, what you see now in front of you is that, that machine is just forming some Manx sod hedges mm. that's going to be turfed, and there's going to be some gorse bushes and some hawthorn planted on the top of it. The opposite side is going to be an embankment with a smaller sod hedge on top. The road construction is going to be about 300 mil of type 1 and 200 mil of uh, three layers of tarmac. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, it'll just blend into the countryside very quickly, won't it? Yeah, well, the, the, the Manx sod hedges, the whole idea of them is when you're standing on the main highway, looking down, all you'll see is embankments, yeah. green, green yeah. sod hedges. Um, the actual pipeline itself, as we look up the site, is to the right-hand side. Um, them pipes that you see there, that's the type of pipe we put in, which was yeah. an 800mm going onto a 900mm at the top. And they're already under there? They're already in there. All, all ready to go. Uh, and those uh, red pipes we can see, are they spare? Or they were spare, <laughs> they're, they're spare, mm. but uh, the other contractor that's working on the uh, uh, White Hole to Mary Vague, he is using the same type of pipe, so he'll he'll uh, use them. He'll come and collect those. The decision to run the pipe over ground, over the bridge, I mean, uh, it was thought, I mean, you couldn't put it under the bridge, obviously, otherwise the arch would have to be much higher to clear the trains, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, it would have been. It just wouldn't have worked. Mm. The, the only way of doing it was that way because it's a gravity-fed line, this. Right. It, it is a pump main from Douglas to Mary Vague, but from the actual, believe it or not, from the actual top of the road into Mary Vague series works is gravity-fed. Really? Yeah. So, in fact, the top of the road there is higher than Mary Vague planned. That's right. Like the way the Lexi wheel works, it'll That's just it. find its own level. Exactly. Amazing.